Hello, today at Greenwood we're going to be working on a couple of Japanese larch trees. There's a different story behind both these trees I've got here today. This one on the left is just one that I've recently bought in from a gentleman that's retired from bonsai due to ill health, a collection of trees and there's a larch amongst them. Uh, the pot's a little bit, the pot's pretty dubious but the tree's got a little bit of age to it but it's a bit unkempt and needs pruning so we're going to do a little bit of maintenance pruning on this tree, show you how to shape it and to trim it back in midsummer. And the other tree we've got here on the right hand side of your screen is a twin planting of Japanese larch. This particular tree was in my father's book, The Complete Book of Bonsai. And here it is, it was used for the larch, Japanese larch page in the book. So this tree here was uh, taken 30 years ago and it was a 20 year old tree. Over the last few years, as the tree's now nearing 50, uh, just over 50 years old, it went through a phase of dropping a few branches. And this larch here, that was in this book, this was always one of two trees. At the time we did this book, we got two larch that were very similar. They'd come from the same area and they'd been grown and kept the same. And they were individual trees in their own right. And then over the years, as one of them or both of them dropped a few branches, which can happen on old Japanese larch, we made the decision a few years ago to take them out of the individual pots and plant them together, reunite them as a pair of trees in this rustic informal bonsai pot. So it's a bit of a story behind it. They were probably grown together initially in the same forest when they were collected and then they were divided and now they've come back together and they're growing happily in this pot. Because as it happened with these, because they both lost a few branches, we got, unfortunately, we got to the stage where as an individual tree, one of them wasn't really enough. You know, we've lost, we, we lost some branches down here, which were these low, large branches on these Japanese larch. So this, the design wasn't as good as it could have been. So we're putting them together. The weakness of this main tree is bolstered by the branches on this one behind it. So they do a good job together. So that will be their life now, living together in this pot. And we tend to trim the larch here in very early spring, trim them for structure, get in there and look at the actual branches and trim them back to buds. And then we haven't pruned it at all since then. So we're now middle of July. We've just let this grow unchecked till now. And it's now due a mid season prune. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So back, this, back with this Japanese larch, it's one of my father's trees that was in his book. And we're just going to do a little bit of summer pruning on it seeing as we've got a little bit of time at the end of the day here it's been a bit a uh, bit warm a bit muggy for us here in the UK but uh, we've got a few jobs like this we need to get done so we thought at the end of the day we'll get them sorted and as we said earlier this larch has been left to grow unchecked this year it hasn't had a lot of food on it you know, we haven't fertilized it with anything I don't think this year we just let it come out at its own sort of pace and now it's got sort of three, four, five inches of growth on some of these sections. So we just need to deal with that to get it back into shape. So when you're pruning larch, you know, I tend to use a, a quite a fine pair of scissors to do it. And this long shoot like this, what they tend to do, they send out, they send out a little shoot like this. So early on in the year, when you get them to this sort of stage, if you need to, you can prune them with scissors, but you can also pinch them out. So you can hold the tree, take that tip, and just pinch it out with your fingertips. And it's reduced it back like that, nice and neatly. Now, when they get a little bit larger, a little bit longer, so if you leave them later on in the year, they get to this sort of elongation on the more vigorous shoots, these become a bit too tough. And we could probably pinch the tip out but if we want to pinch back further down into here, it becomes a bit, bit tough and it's not really going to pinch very well. So if they've, got, if they've got to this sort of stage, you're better doing it with scissors. Now obviously as they grow, 
they grow in like a herringbone formation of the needles. So if you go in with a big pair of scissors and you cut across, then all these tips will go brown. So you're always going in with a fine pair of scissors and going in at an angle like that and trimming off. So here, again, I'll approach this new growth, scissors from this way, so I'm in line, I'm at least in line with all the needles on this side. Might cut through the odd one on the other side, but it's minimal. Yeah, so you're always trying to minimise any obvious cuts that you're making on the tree. And then, if they elongate even more, like this strong shoot here, this has put out length. Now it's put out length, it's thinking about putting out width. Can you see it's got one, two, three, four. It started putting out side, side branches here. We don't need any of them, so it's just going to come back into there. So I'm just going to work my way around the tree and we'll do it from this side with this one and you'll see it just take shape as I work around and do it. And we'll probably do this again later on in the year, but this will be the most, uh, probably the most growth it will put out. The, the most shaggy it will sort of look, hopefully, is now. And then we'll give it a trim back to make it look a little bit more tidy. And then it can be repotted in early early spring. Larch leaf quite early over here. They're one of the first things to come into leaf out of winter. So it's not uncommon that sort of beginning of March, the larch are pushing. Compared to some climates, we have a fairly mild winter. So, you know, if you're growing these in the uh, northern United States and Canada, you know, they still have snow on them at that time of year. And when you've got snow on them, we're, we're, we haven't got snow on them and we're, we're repotting them already. So a little bit of pruning in here. And just always checking between these foliage pads just to pick up the little bits of growth that we're missing. Things that are growing down too much. Can you start to see it taking shape? Back in here. Just return it round. There's some little bits growing down from this foliage pad that wants sorting. We're just starting at the bottom of the tree in this case, working our way up, looking at each foliage pad. And I'm always trimming these trees. You know, at the moment, I'm trimming this foliage pad by foliage pad. I'm looking at this as a foliage pad. I'm taking out crossing growth, growth that's too long, too weak, too strong, always trying to make it look better and to balance the vigour and the structure so we get a nice looking foliage pad like this. Once I trim the foliage pads like this, then I'll tend to have a look at the tree as a whole and then I might decide to shorten one a little bit more or something like that. So it's quite easy because we've trimmed this tree before. I've trimmed this tree obviously several times. Lost count of how many times we've, we've pruned it over the years. And every time it comes to me, every time it wants doing, we just do this maintenance work. And that's how we can develop the ramification and the network of branches over the years so we've done most of this back of the tree working our way around making sure we don't miss any bits these that are growing strongly upward strongly downward and where it's getting a little bit too wide and hairy just again going in with scissors on an angle ever so simple just pruning it back in here, these are hanging down a little bit too much. Same with these shoots here. The larch are quite sappy, so I'll clean my scissors well before I start doing this. So I get good clean cuts on the tree. I'll clean them and sharpen them before this, and I'll clean them again afterwards, because they do get quite, it will make your scissors fairly green and uh, and sappy once you're pruning some some larch, a large tree like this particularly, because there's quite a lot of growth to come off it. So here now we're halfway up the tree, we're reaching more vigour. Larch are very apically dominant, so they put a lot of vigour on at the top. The lower branches less so, so the lower branches, we've just nipped them back a little bit. We can be a little bit harder on some of these 
branches in the mid section of the tree and also harder at the top of the tree. But the same procedure as before, shortening back these long shoots, always trying to do it neatly, nice neat cut so it's not obvious. You know, by the time you've finished trimming a tree like this, if you've done it neatly, you've done it well, it shouldn't really look like it's been pruned. You shouldn't see any sort of cut surfaces. It should just look nice and neat. Let's just keep turning it round. So some of these longer ones in here and always just separating these foldage pads. There's a little dead branch in there that we can take off. See this one, let's put softer shoots on, a bit smaller than the rest of the tree. So again, you know, if you've got a tree and it's all at this sort of stage of development, you can just pinch all that section out if you want. Any of the larger ones you can prune, you can prune back. And we do get a second chance to do this work in autumn. You know, we can actually see the structure. So we can see whether we're cutting the right place and any bits that are a bit fragmented or we perhaps didn't cut them neat enough, we can always go back in and tidy them up. But it's not a it's not a reason to be sloppy at this stage. We should still always do this as neat as we can to the best of our ability. So that we don't have to do do a second job later on. This is hanging down a bit too much. This is a bit long. So is this one. A little dead branch in there. Just once coming off. As we work our way up to the tree, I'm going to taper up to the apex with this foliage here. Shorten some of this back, back into here. So here we've got the crown or the apex of that secondary tree. It's slightly different in colour. It's a slightly paler Japanese larch. So there's a little bit of contrast. The larger tree is a little bit darker in needle. Obviously, that's just the way it is. It's the growing in the same pot. They get fed the same, water the same. So that's just na a little bit of natural variation. These trees originally, were, I think they were collected from the wild. So they would have been, they would have been planted out or naturally occurring from seed. So you get a bit of variation on leaf, even though they've been growing in quite close proximity at the time. A few bits hanging down there, working the way up to the top of this second tree, just shortening back these sections, a bit in the top of there. This is crossing over this section here. These are hanging down a little bit. This is a little bit too long. This can be shortened back. Get in there now with it. A few more in here. And this quite a lot growing from the apex of here, going back into the tree. So they just want tidying up, pruning out. You can see that just these last few that are left, little dead section there can come out. That's sort of these easy enough. And then just back up, back up to the apex of a main primary tree little dead branch there can come off. This one's snipping off. A little bit there and here. As we get up to the top, just make sure we, we catch all those shoots. Here. You can see where you've been with something like this. Make sure we don't miss these. Just a few at the top. This one. Leave this one a little bit longer to fill in. Shorten these back a little bit into here. 
let's see if we can tidy that up. Another one that I've missed. One here. Little one there. And here. Now I'm looking at the actual tree as a whole and there's the odd little bit that just wants trimming back a little bit more than we did when we trimmed it back on that first pass. A few little bits here. This is going up a bit too much. This section here, not shortening. Turn it back round to face the front to me. A few of these needles that are hanging down from some of these foliage pads. Not a, not a big issue just to just to remove a few of those just pluck them out with your fingertips this is a bit long this section here is a bit lumpy coming out of here so that can come off little dead section here this little bit here that's a bit lumpy in there try and take that off see where it's coming from Take that tip off there it's all a bit solid and lumpy there get some finer growth further back in fact we might be able to just take off the tip of that there's a big stub at the, at the end but, uh, try and take take those away get some finer growth behind it to fill in this is a little bit same this bit here shorten it back so that's just a quick spring prune. We've still got to give it a little bit of a weed and a tidy up and do that later. It's not the most, most important thing to do. We don't, certainly don't need to video it, but it's got a few weeds just around the surface. So we'll give this a spruce up, tidy up some of these mosses and weeds that we don't need on the surface, keep the mosses, get rid of the weeds, and just had a nice mid spring trim and tidy up. You know, it's only sort of, whatever it was, 10, 15 minute job, even on a tree of this size, just to get it back into shape from all that new growth it's put out. Very, very vigorous tree, really. It's done really well this year, and it's good to give it a bit of a trim and just get it ready for the next few months. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a like and by all means subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out our other videos got quite a collection of them now and more to come so give us a subscribe so you don't miss the new ones coming out over the next few days and thank you very much for watching